Warning, this video does not contain a script, but it does contain spoilers for the actually good version of the Electric State. So the other day I was scrolling through YouTube and then I saw this, this innocuous little trailer, and, and then I clicked on it, and it was for the Electric State adaptation, which I waited for for a long time. Well, not a, that long of a time, but it did pique my interest. So I watched the trailer to see how they could utilize this, this great setting that they've been given by Samino Stellino himself. And now I wish I never fucking did! Listen, and I want you to listen real closely on this, okay? This trailer... is straight ass! It completely butchers the original source material and it's been turned into, effectively and fittingly, from the directors themselves, a Marvel movie. Which, if you read the original book, you would know this is something more akin to fucking No Country for Old Men. Marvel movies and No Country for Old Men do not mix well. This trailer pissed me off so much that I'm making an emergency YouTube commentary slop video on it. That's how bad it is. Basically, if you don't know, The Electric State was a book that was made in 2018 by Simon Stallenhog, who already had made two other books, Tales from the Loop and and things from the Flood, which in themselves were a duology, and the rights to the film were bought by the Russo brothers in 2017, before the book actually came out. And, um, now that the Russo brothers are actually using that IP, um, well, it's not the best thing ever, I'm gonna tell you. The original Electric State focused around themes of consumerism, ambiguousness, uh, darkness, isolation, and also just generally being lonely. On top of this, it had some kick-ass aesthetics. Now, I don't want to tell you the story of the book right now because this is just a slop video on YouTube and it would be too long if we did that. So instead, I'm going to explain elements of the book as I go on criticizing the trailer. Now, the problem about this trailer is just how fucking much it changes the original lore. Case in point number one, drones. In the book, drones were essentially giant air and land battleships that were controlled using your brain. While they weren't the main cause for the fall of America within the book, they were a major contributor and precursor to what caused the fall of America in the book, and their carcasses were laid around the country. Not only were they a good way to show how much warfare had progressed, but they were also a good way to show how much the West has fallen in the book. They were not only good set pieces within the book, but they were a great way to symbolize just how large of a war that America was recovering from and how it contributed to what you see before you in the book as well. It was a war that was fought almost exclusively by humans within the book and usually professional air pilots. Another aspect that was brought up from them was the fact that any female who used them, or at least any female pilot, would have any children that they tried to produce be a stillborn, which that arc in the book was concluded in a very horrifying way, holy sh- So it wasn't just all that I explained prior, but it also had some post-war elements that, you know, were a good shake-up in the later events of the book. Cannot stress how much these guys were absolutely fucking everywhere. There are quite a few panels where they are either shown or explained. And do you know what the adaptation does? They go with a robot rebellion plotline. We all lost something. Some of the most famous images that were spread around the internet of the Electric State were the cartoonish consumerist robots, which you would see in maybe like a TikTok edit or something. Unfortunately, the Russo brothers seemed to have focused on this aspect too much and made it all about the cartoonish robots. And what better way to focus on the robots than some sort of rebellion? There are two kind of big problems with this. One. It's kind of generic, and it was only kind of cool when The Matrix did it. Following up on the first point, it gets rid of an actually kind of unique thing that the first book had going. Like, flying battleships controlled with your mind? That sounds cool. And worse yet, it portrays that robots can actually have emotions. <laughs> No, but seriously, in the original book, robots were brainless, soulless, emotionless machines that usually did not have good intentions, and usually, if they had any intentions at all that weren't good intentions, they were usually lethal. But in the adaptation, 
No, robots have feelings too. They lost all their rights. <laughs> Not only this, but there's barely any amalgamations or sort of like robo necromorph that the book had in the adaptation, which were a big part of why it was appealing as an art book. In fact, hell, I don't think there are any robo necromorphs or even drones, period. I couldn't find any in the trailer. Holy shit. I'm not saying there weren't just references that were not there to the drones. There was diddly squat about the drones. No visuals, no models, no explanations, not even a single line or text, nothing. The next problem I'd like to bring up is Chris Pratt, or more importantly, the fact that there is any side character at all to the main protagonist. All right, well, that's a bit of a, that's a bit of a stretch. Let me explain. You know the robot in the trailer that accompanies Millie Bobby Brown? Well, that was actually in the book, but that was the only companion that the protagonist had. Spoilers, by the way, but it's, in case you can tell from, you know, the trailer and everything, the robot Skip is controlled by her brother, who has a VR headset on, a very advanced one at that, and has been controlling it to lead her to it to save him. And the book has a very ambiguous ending on whether the severing of the VR headset actually worked and didn't kill him. Because that's one of the things in the book, is that the VR headsets would actually kill people after a while. Uh, by the way, just a quick tangent about those. Uh, the Sentry Mode 6 headsets that are featured in the trailer that were actually in the book and were a major part, uh, they do, I think, maybe, I guess, do their job, but they aren't as like portrayed nearly as gruesomely as they were in the book, which I mean, for the trailer, you know, fair enough. However, generally, just the protagonist and Skip being the main characters were really a big factor to why the isolation of the book worked. It really wasn't anybody else, it was just a kinda weak robot and a girl with a combat shotgun who was also a lesbian. This is a concept that Signals would steal shamelessly. Chris Pratt being the mm -mm, third wheel, so to speak, doesn't exactly help the uh, isolation aesthetics from the original book. It's just another character that Chris Pratt plays, and it's really not necessary, especially for the Electric State. The closest thing that did come to another protagonist that wasn't Skip was Walter. In the book, we never even see or hear any speech from Walter directly. Instead, their panels of the protagonist or drives that they're having, usually accompanied by the handler talking to Walter. From what we gather in the book, we can conclude that they're two ex-soldiers and government agents who are trying to track down Skip for some fairly important reason, we suppose. Walter's handler, no not handler Walter, proceeds to give commentary or stories towards Walter without any input from Walter about during war events, and neurographic networks. Generally, Walter's handler is just in the book occasionally to give out some cryptic message or some important world building that could help to the atmosphere of the story. The only time we see Walter is at the end of the book when he's intercepting the house that Skip and the protagonist are in, but gets killed by a robot. A very giant, psychotic robot, might I add. But don't forget, the robots are still people too. The protagonist and Walter never even interact. The closest that happens is the fact that the house rumbles from the machine that presumably kills Walter. That's it. A funny side note, uh, Giancarlo Esposito is actually starring in this movie. So they got fucking Gus Fring to star in it, but not Walter. You can't make this shit up sometime. Last thing that I'd like to comment on are the tone, coloring, and aesthetics. While the coloring in the original book was still generally gray and drab, the colors popped out more like red because of it. And generally, that made the scenery much more atmospheric. It felt very cloudy, kind of nostalgic. It added to the sort of calm but silent apocalypse the whole thing had going on with all the robot necromorphs going around, yet seemingly not that harmful, usually. Oh, and who could forget, there were barely any actual jokes, sort of, in the book. The only real joke I could remember from the book was when the protagonist commented on a crashed drone and said, Behold the Amphion, 10 million pounds of rust and bird shit. Meanwhile, in the adaptation, there's very warm colors, and there, you know, are quite a few jokes because this is made by the same people who made Marvel movies. I mean, for fuck's sake, at the end of the trailer, there's a sentient robot getting hit with a fridge and saying, Son of a. Those fridges are being thrown out of a catapult by other cheeky comedic robots. The only thing that comes to Grimm is maybe the scenes where people are shown with neurocasters on their head or the fact that the protagonist is being told that she can't really change things. But that's really kind of generic and it isn't really unique. Oh, and this is all on a $300 million budget. $300 million. That always goes right.
never went wrong. Anyways, that was my quick video on why I generally did not like or actually kind of hated this trailer. And, um... I'll probably make like a bigger video on um, the electric state in the future, but for now, um, that's all. I do have a, um, a video about a, a Roblox game that I'm working on. I've already reviewed it uh, on this channel before, but uh, I'm, I'm doing a remaster. But uh, that probably won't be fun. Pure instinct.